Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at what is now Tropical Depression 11. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and our pinned comment down below. That's also where you can find our very exciting Discord community and Facebook groups as well, which I highly recommend you check out. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, when do you think our next tropical storm after this one, if it does become Josephine, will be? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get right into it and we're taking a look at our satellite imagery here and you can see that there is some very tall clouds and since yesterday it's become very organized comparatively and really throughout the day yesterday we were tracking this one as it was gaining uh, some organization. Here is NOAA's official cone forecast because, again, it is a tropical depression officially now. So we do have a cone forecast now from them. And as you can see, uh, by the time we're at about 2 p.m. today, they do expect that we will be at tropical storm status. And they think we will remain that at that status all the way until at least 2 a.m. on Monday. Very, very interesting, can, especially considering that just a couple of days ago, we did not expect this one to become a tropical storm whatsoever. But as you can see, it is just north of Puerto Rico with its cone. And basically, at this point, they think it could either curve or head towards the East Coast. They're keeping all the options on the table here with their placement of this cone, and I think that's a really good choice as of right now. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the shear, the dry air, the, the spaghetti models, the intensity guidance, and all sorts of things of that nature, and just take a look at what this storm's going to do moving forward. All right, now here we are taking a look at that shear, and as you can see, it's in a green area. You can see that white dot towards the right bottom corner of the screen there. It's in the green areas. That means it's in favorable conditions, but in order to move northwest, it's going to need to head through some red areas, which means it is going to interact with some more difficult areas to move through for a tropical cyclone. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how this one handles the, the shear there. Now, the dry air, as we move on here, this is a little more interesting because we were seeing those very bright reds and pinks out ahead of it to the northwest of it, but now uh, it's just kind of yellows and oranges, which is going to be interesting. I think that that could mean we're going to see a little bit of an easier time for this one to develop uh, than originally anticipated, and I think that's probably why they have it becoming a tropical storm and staying a tropical storm now because it, things just look a lot more favorable than they once did for this one. Now you might have noticed in the previous tropical outlooks I've been making, I've been trying to do the shear and the dry air, uh, just because I think it's always pretty much an important factor to factor in. Obviously this time around, it seems like this storm is winning against these two factors. Though very quickly things can turn around and we can see these uh, negative factors start to really eat up a tropical storm. Uh, though for now, it seems like it has been developing and moving in a more, uh, like I said, just developmental direction, and it's it's lowering in pressure, gaining intensity, and we're really just going to want to watch it closely because this one uh, could do mul multiple different things. It could track different directions. It could gain intensity more than anticipated. Very interesting storm we have on our hands here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at the spaghetti model guidance. All right, here's our spaghetti models, and as you can see, they originally had this one for sure curving up north, and now only about half of them have that northward curve, and then the other half kind of have it continuing in a northwesterly direction instead of just a plain north. So if it doesn't take that curve, a lot more question marks are brought onto the table as far as what to expect moving forward with Tropical Depression 11 and what will most likely become Tropical Storm Josephine. Uh, so we're really going to want to watch this one closely. Within the next 24 hours, it should be at tropical storm status, and certainly in the next 48 hours, unless something unforeseen occurs. But within the next five days, we're going to see it move generally just to the north of Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic there. And then that's kind of the big question mark is right there at about 120 hours out. Is it going to curve north from that point, or is it going to continue its northwesterly track the northwesterly track would bring a lot more question marks. The curve uh, towards Bermuda would obviously be bad, uh, but we would know what to anticipate with that. 
we know it would impact Bermuda and then pretty much nothing else. A northwesterly track brings a lot of question marks to who's going to see impacts from potential Josephine. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at our ensemble spaghetti models and then our intensity guidance. Then we're going to give you a main development region update and then our official direct weather forecast. All right, so here's our GEFS, which is our GFS ensemble model, uh, spaghetti models here. And as you can see, they have it curving, most of them here. We have a couple that keep it going northwestward, uh, but as of 6Z, so this isn't our updated 12Z, probably 12Z is out by time you are watching this video. Uh, they really have a weaker storm that is mostly curving north. Now, the one thing I will warn you, and this is kind of a pro tip, the 6Z runs and the 18Z runs usually tend to be a little less reliable than the 0Z and the 12Z runs. Usually, these are just model runs that kind of uh, reanalyze. For instance, the 6Z reanalyzes the 0Z run and kind of reruns it in a different way. Uh, so, the 12Z will be a fresh and new run, uh, and we will probably see a big difference. Now... Here's our GEPS, our Canadian Ensemble model, and this model does not do that because it only has a 0Z and a 12Z run. Here's our 0Z zero, zero run from last night on the JEPS model, and as you can see, this model is just all over the place, though the majority here have it curving north and then eventually eastward, but it's kind of uh, all over the place with when that happens and where that happens. Some of them have it curving very early, some of them have it reaching very, very close to the United States and then curving. Uh, but every single model, except for one there, has this one curving eventually. Those oranges and reds indicate a stronger storm and a lower pressure. So they do have this storm intensifying, uh, and the average is a 993 millibar low pressure system by time we're at hours 216, which would be very, very interesting to say the least. We would certainly be seeing a tropical storm, possibly even a hurricane by that point, if this was to be correct. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at our intensity guidance. We're going to take a look at the North Atlantic sea surface temperature anomalies and then our official direct weather forecast for this one. All right, so here is our Tropical Depression 11 model intensity guidance. As you can see, there is one model there that has this one completely dropping off in intensity very soon. Don't know what all that's about. It has it reforming in about 96 hours and then dropping off again. I think there might be an error there because of how sporadic that looks, uh, but who knows. There is a couple of models that keep us just under tropical storm status, but as you can see, a vast majority of these models do have us entering tropical storm status and potentially even moderate to strong tropical storm status then there is a bit of a drop-off after about 72 hours, which is three days from now. And I believe that that's probably due to us entering those areas of high shear that I mentioned before. I think that that's going to really give this, this uh, storm some trouble, and many of these models pick up on that. Though, some of these models overestimate that type of thing uh, from time to time. Uh, there is one model here that keeps us kind of in moderate tropical storm status and eventually intensifying. Also, you can see around at hours 120, we do see kind of a resurgence in intensity on some of these models. There's a lot of things that could happen here, uh, and we're going to need to continue to keep you guys updated with this storm. Now, as I said before, here's the North Atlantic sea surface temperature anomalies. I wanted to show this is the overall North Atlantic, basically just the sea surface temperature anomalies of the entire thing. And as you can see, we are dramatically climbing here. Uh, we're at positive 0 0.3 degrees and a half, actually. Uh, which means we're just that far above normal in Celsius there. Uh, and that's pretty crucial. That is very crucial because that's taken into account the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, the main development region, the areas off the East Coast, all of the areas where our tropical systems could track. Uh, so we see this dramatically climbing. If this climb continues, that could be very bad news for this hurricane season. Now, here's our official direct weather forecast for tropical depression number 11, and as you can see, not a lot has changed. We expect this one to track just north of Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic. We do expect that there is a chance that this one curves very far north very early on, but there also is a chance that it just continues in a very slightly northwesterly direction towards maybe the southeast coast, uh, where it could curve before those areas, or it could potentially hit those areas, though no models show that at this point. So that's kind of an outlier option, but I want to keep it on the table just because it's good to play things safe, especially with a weaker storm and it's this far out as well. Uh, though the vast majority uh, think that this one will curve out to sea and that would be very good news. So we have our fingers crossed for that option here at Direct Weather. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, 
I asked you guys, will this one be a fish storm or interact with land? And Michael Cool, I think that's how you pronounce your name, said, give it a few days and you will know whether or not this one becomes something more than a fish storm. And I really agree with that. I think we need more time with this one in order to properly answer that question. All right, now for your patron highlights of the day, we've added a few new names. Obviously, we have our diamond patrons, Mad Birds and Mark J. Thank you so much. But we've added a platinum patron, which is the highest option you can be. Donna Carnes, I think that's how you say your name, or Carnes. Thank you so much for becoming a Platinum Patron, and thank you to all of you who support the channel here on Patreon. If you would like to do so, if you haven't already, you can check it out in the description or the pinned comment down below, like I said before. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.